Uh, welcome back to another video on uh, amino acid titrations and uh, finding the pol uh, isoelectric point of them. So in this video, I'm going to be looking at the polypeptide chain uh, charge uh, calculation and how to find them. So suppose you're given a polypeptide chain. Now, what we all know is once you get into a polypeptide chain, the individual amino acids inside the, except for the terminal residues, won't have any free ends. Therefore, their alpha carboxyl and alpha uh, amino group won't participate in the uh, protonation and deprotonation from the solvent. So we are always considered about the terminal amino acids and if any triprotic amino acids are there in it. So what is a triprotic amino acid? A triprotic amino acid are those amino acids which have an ionizable side chain group. You can learn more about it from my previous video linked over here. So uh, I hope you can watch that first and you'll be able to get a clear understanding over here. So now let's go get into the question. So to find the charge at, a P, at uh, for any amino acid uh, polypeptide chain, start by drawing out the terminal ends. That is the NH3 positive terminal in the left side and the carboxyl terminal in the other side. All right. Now the second stage, as I told, is to find out any triprotic amino acids. What are triprotic? I'll just tell. They are E, D, H, R, K, and uh, C and Y. Okay, these are your triprotic amino acids. If you look over here, none of them are that, and these are all tripro uh, diprotic amino acids, meaning two. So, what you can do is cancel out all the dipro diprotic amino acids. So, valine we can cancel, isoleucine we can cancel, leucine we can cancel, and methionine we can cancel. Because they are all diprotic, they don't participate in this whole equation. So, now moving on. So, now this effectively becomes A, W, C, O, O, H. NH3 plus. Alright, now what we have to know for doing all this calculation is pKa1 is always, A1 is always around 2.6. Approximately, unless they give it, just use this as a reference value. And pKa2 is always around 9.6. Reference value again. Unless stated otherwise, use this. So, remember, pKa1 always corresponds to the alpha carboxyl group. pKa2 always corresponds to the alpha amino group. Alright, so now assuming this is at pH equals 1. If pH is equal less than the, uh, from my previous videos, you would remember, if pH, uh, you have to know this uh, criteria. If pH is less than pKa, deprotonation occurs. pH greater than pKa, deprotonation occurs. And if pH is equal to pKa, 50% deprotonated, 50% protonated. Alright, so using this knowledge, let us continue. Suppose this is pH equals to 1. So everything is in its, deproto uh, in its protonated stage. So the net charge here is just plus 1 from the alpha amino group. Now we need it at pH equals 5.9. So draw pH equals 5.9. Alright. So now what will happen? Just draw A and W. C, O, O. Let's just wait for it. And N will just draw. Let's look at it. Now is 5.9 greater than 2.6? Yes, it is. Therefore, the alpha carboxyl group gets deprotonated. Why? Because pH is greater than pKa leading to deprotonation. Therefore, COO minus H plus is removed. Now, look at the alpha amino group. Is the pH 5.9 greater or lesser than pKa2? It is lesser. Therefore, protonation of the alpha amino group. Therefore, this remains to be NH3 plus. So, what is the net charge? This becomes this. So, what is the net charge at 5.9? It is plus 1 from your alpha amino group and it is minus 1 from your carboxyl group. So, what does this mean? It is 0 and we have our zuterion state. If you want to know the PI of this, just have PI is equal to pKa1 plus pKa2 divided by 2. Do the calculation and you'll be able to get it. It's as simple as that. Now, usually they won't ask this question in this. This is just to know for your basic understanding. Now, here's the fun part. In interview questions and all, they'll be incorporating triprotic amino acids along with the diprotic amino acids. So let's begin how we learn how to do it once we go about it. So what was my first step I told? Draw the terminal groups COO, H and NS3. H3 and plus. All right. So now what is the next stage? It is to look if any diprotic amino acids are there. Glycine, it is a diprotic amino acid, but remember it is in its terminal stage. Uh, terminal state. Therefore, I can't cancel it out because it's participating in the so solution interaction. Tryptophan is a diprotic amino acid. It does not participate. Cancel it out. Tyrosine is a diprotic amino acid. And this is the reason I told you to remember the structures is because we have to draw the R group. The R group of tyrosine, that's a functional group, is actually OH. Now, you can ask me why I didn't draw the benzene ring. It's because 
if from my previous video if you check out i'll explain it properly why we can just uh, reduce it down to this structure and don't need to incorporate everything else moving on q q is for uh, uh, glutamine glutamine does not uh, is not a, a triprotic it's a diprotic amino acid you can cancel it out and finally arginine arginine it is a terminal group and it is also triprotic in nature and it has a terminal of nh3 plus you can ask again the reason why i'm not drawing the whole structure you can learn from my previous video so now moving along another thing you have once if it's an interview question or a paper question usually they'll be giving you the pka3 values for o, this tyrosine and arginine you can ask for them in the interview question too so the uh, i'll just provide it over here for uh, tyrosine the pka3 is equal to 10.07 and for arginine pka3 is equal to 12.37 all right this will be the approx and again for uh, the alpha terminal this pka1 is equal to uh, 2.6 and pka2 is equal to uh, 9.6 all right just please remember this 2.6 and 9.6 the other values will always be given so now moving along so now this is assuming this is ph equals 1 meaning it's the resulting ph one meaning it's so low it's lower than every other pk values therefore everything will be in its protonated state this is usually the best practice way on how you can do it now let's do this now if we increase our ph all the way to 10.5 what will happen Right, I will just make, draw the reduced structure glycine, tyrosine, arginine, COO. I'll just wait for it. NH, I'll just wait for it. I don't know the stru what structure will do. Uh, will it be protonated or deprotonated? That's why I'm waiting. Then O, I don't know if it will be protonated or deprotonated. NH, I don't know if it will be protonated or deprotonated. Now let's look. Is 10.5 less or greater than 2.6? It is way greater. Therefore, deprotonation. COO minus. Is 10.5 less or greater than 12.37? It is less. Therefore, protonation, NS3+. plus. Is 10.5 greater or less than 10.07? It is greater. Therefore, deprotonation. Is 10.5 greater or lesser than 9.6? It is less. Therefore, uh, it will be uh, uh, deprotonated and NS2. NS3 will become NS2. OH will become O-. NS3+, plus remains NS3+. Plus. COOH will become CO-. minus. So, what will the net charge be? It will be 0 minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 so what will that totally end up equal to minus 1 and this is the charge of this polypeptide chain at a ph of 10.5 you can continue this uh, uh, studying it at different ph levels as a practice for yourself i hope this has been very easy for you to understand if you find any doubts you can feel free to ask it in the comment section down below i'll be glad to help you all out so I hope this uh, able to understand. Remember, keep your terminal amino acids, remove diprotic amino acids, remember the uh, functional group, I have videos on it, and um, just um, from its protonated stage, bring it down slowly to the final answer. So this is how this has been concept bio on learning how to find the charge of a polypeptide chain. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Thank you for watching. Bye.